Hi everybody, I'm back. Um, I got my pens that I ordered from Amazon. They arrived like this. This is the uh, UPC or whatever. They come from China apparently. And um, so this was the Amazon listing, in case you wanted to see it. Um, it was $9.85 as of September, whatever today is. As of September 9th, it was $9.85. I just looked up micro fine liner pens. Um, I don't know exactly, uh, this is coming from Let Mall. Anyway, we're going to give this a go, open this up and look at them. It's a whole set and it only costs $9.85 for 10 pens. So they were less than a dollar a pen, which is a good price. They say... STA pigment liner on them. I'm going to turn on the light so you can see it better. And then I'll turn it back off when I have to show my screen. But that's way better. STA pigment liner um, on the end of the cap and on the barrel. It's got the size. Uh, it's supposed to be water based and water resistant. So that's interesting that it's water based and it's water resistant. In the um, in the description it says that it's uh, archival. I don't know if it is or not. It doesn't say on the pen. We'll see what happens. Um, so I thought I would give them a little swatch test just to check. Uh, let me go smallest to biggest here. Let's see. What's the smallest one? This one. So it's got a... I'm going to... Do it. You're going to have it sideways, and then I'll turn it when I'm done. Point zero five. That's the kind of line it makes. I'm going to put them back in the box. And this is a point one. So that would be the size of an O1 micron, right? Let's see. Do I have an O1 micron that I can compare it with? I think they were all dead. Uh, I have a blue O1. That's a little thicker, actually. 0.255 millimeter. I wonder if it's closer to a, a 0.2. Interesting. Okay. Because so everybody's pens are numbered differently. This one's the 0.2. Yeah, that's closer to that size. So the uh, number 2 on this brand is closer to the 01 micron. And then it comes with an O3. Which looks like it's closer to the O5 micron. Do I have an O5 micron? I do. This is an O5 micron. It's closer to that. Oop. And then there's an 0.6. That got really big, really fast. Was there a 0.5? Oh, wait a minute. We skipped some. Sorry. Yes, goes that way. Okay, forget that. We're gonna go to 0.4. They're getting thicker. Point five. 
And that's probably close to... No, not quite. Not quite as thick as the 08 from uh, Zig, but it's getting close. 0.6. That's close to that. And then there's a 0.8. Look how big that nib is. That's a nice big fat one. And then it came with two brush pens. I only need to test one. Yay! I needed a brush pen. How nice and juicy that is. With a beautiful, I can get a thin little line. Or I can get a fat line. This has got a nice tip. We'll see how it holds up. That's nice. Okay. So I'm going to do a drawing with this. I want to... These are actually kind of thin. I actually like this number two size or this number three size as a drawing size. So um, I'm going to start with the number two size and I'm going to get out the brush pen. And I'm going to play with those today. I may use other sizes, so I'm going to leave my box sitting right here. But for sure, I want those. Oh, and I wanted to test to see if they are waterproof. Uh, I don't have my paintbrushes near me. Okay, I don't have my paintbrushes near me, but I'm just going to stick my fin finger in my water. And I'm just going to take, and I'm just going to swoop down with a swoop of water. And yep, they didn't smear. That's good. That means I can use my water brush or my watercolor pencils or um, any other water media. Um, I can draw first and then do the water on top. That's awesome. Because the only smear is right there and I think that's dirt from my finger. That's, that's cool. Okay. I'm happy with these. Good purchase. All right, I'm going to turn my light back off so you guys can see the pattern. And we're going to find today's pattern. So that's where we need to go. Pattern-collections. Go down here to pattern focus. And the last pattern of the week. Oh, no, it's another hex one. See, I told you they were coming. Hex ones. This one's called Hex Whirl. It's kind of cool, though. All right. I'm, I'm not too unhappy with that. Look at those. Fun different ways you can make this pattern. Depending on if you do it with a bigger or a smaller in the middle here. That's that's cool. Okay. So, we need our hex to start with. And then a circle in the middle. And then it looks like from each corner, we're going to come and do like a, a curvy swirl like that. Now, you could just leave it just like that, I would imagine. But Ina's got us doing this little curve right here that kind of makes it spider webby looking. Or like the inside of a camera lens or something. That's really cool. And then here we go. So, and then she shows it actually with circles also. You don't have to do it in a hex. But let's give this a go with the hex. I'm going to actually turn on my light. And I'm not going to mess with the whole free form thing like I did last yesterday. I, I had issues yesterday. 
definitely had issues. So let's let's use this size. And I'm just going to trace my template because this is just easier for me. And I want one here. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this smaller one and I'm going to add some little ones just to give myself some variety. No wiggle. Like that. That didn't that didn't come out right because I wiggled. My corner isn't quite right. Let me fix that corner. Like that. There we go. And I'm gonna put one down here. I'm going to put one, does one fit here, or is it too close to the edge? That's too close to the edge. Okay. Maybe there? Yeah, maybe there. Okay. Oh, you didn't see what I was doing. I'm so sorry. Anyway. I've drawn some of the bigger ones and some of the smaller ones just kind of randomly on my page so that I don't have, so I have some variety. So I don't have that specific hex grid, but I have some hex shapes on my page. Let's start with that. So now I can Come in here and draw these lines. And they won't be perfect. And that's okay. At least I have a guide as to where to go with... Because I know my hex template isn't perfect. I could go... See, that one doesn't quite line up. I could go purchase... Um, a hexagon shaped uh, drawing tool. I'm sure they have them, you know, like in the drafting section. Or um, even maybe they might have hexagon shaped um, stencils in the in the stencil department. Both of those places might be places where I could find a hexagon shaped thing that's more uh, actually hexagon and not kind of hexagon because I know that my my template that I cut out is not perfect. I know that. But this is close enough. Um, 
actually I don't like that one and I don't like that one because these don't quite line up I'm gonna do I'm gonna erase those two and do something different I don't like those two Actually, I think I'm going to leave it without. I like that shape better. All right. I'm I'm happy with that shape. Okay. So, next thing is a circle in the middle of each one of these and depending on how big or small I make the circle, it will look slightly different. And then we do a curvy line coming kind of like that. Let's do that same line on every single one and then turn our page. I don't have to turn my page so often. Turn my page. Can you see all of them? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, it's time for another question. Next question is, you guys can't see these questions very well, but that's all right. I'm reading it out to you anyway. I'd like to know if you find time to draw every day and if you are always inspired to do it. This, two question, this question is sort of a combined question from Charo and Evelyn. So, um, I do not always find time to draw every single day. I would like to, but you know, life happens. Um, for my channel, I try to draw two or three videos at a time. Sometimes I draw the whole week depending on 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 how things are going sometimes I have uh, my schedule is such that that I have to sit down and draw all seven videos in one day and that makes for a long marathon day and I try not to do that um, I'm, I'm happiest with doing uh, two or three at a time Now that my, I'm laid up with my foot, I've been doing two. Um, yesterday I did three. That was a mistake. I probably shouldn't have done three. Two was probably my max. I should have st stopped at that. Look how pretty those are. They sort of remind me of Cadent because of the swirl. But I really like that. And... To be honest, I want to I want to focus on this shape here. I really like this shape that's happening right there. Hmm. That's interesting. 
wonder how I could do that in a different pattern. I'm just thinking out loud. All right. Now we can embellish. Oh, no. Now there's one more step. I'll take it back. Not quite finished. There's another step. I need to do this sort of spiderwebby looking step. So I need to do this. That's cool too. That that totally changes the look of it though. So if you stopped here, you could stop there. You could also just do every other one of these. And that would make it look different. I like that too. Um You could make these go further and further out. And that one I should have started a little sooner, so I'll do it like that. Or you can maybe do this shape differently. What happens if we do that as a that kind of a shape? That's interesting too, huh? Okay. So what if what if our shape is Is this shape? I like that. What if we don't have a shape there and we just do lines like this? And then what was the second half of this question? Or what, am I always inspired to do it? Um, no, not always. And especially on the uh, weeks where I will only really physically have one day that I can draw, I really have to force myself to sit down and... Usually I'm, I'm in the mood to start, but once I get down to... I've, I've sat here for three hours and I've ground out... Um, you know, six videos and I get to that seventh one, sometimes that one is really hard to push through and and try. So, um, I'm missing a curve there. There. Now I can do that. I need a little separation. Let's 
So yeah, I don't always feel like it. But you know, I do it anyways, and and sometimes, most of the time, it doesn't make any difference to my drawing and my drawing style. Yesterday it did. Yesterday it was too late in the day. I couldn't really see very well up here. I My foot hurt. I shouldn't have even tried. I just shouldn't have. Um, but most of the time, I can just push through and and get it done, and it's fine. I've decided... This one's really dark, but that's okay. Um, but if you want to get better at something, you really do need to practice, and you need to draw. I've 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 seen this on um, on some of my painting. Uh, groups and websites people say well I'm just not I don't feel motivated I don't feel I don't you know so I didn't paint today because I just didn't feel like it and but if you don't feel like it you still should do it because it helps you get better if if you want to get better the only way to get better is to practice your craft if you don't want to practice your craft, that's cool. You don't have to. But don't be upset if you don't get better. You know what I mean? I feel like this needs... Maybe maybe I need to... Striping in here. So... Do it anyway, even if you don't feel like it. Now, I'm not saying that there are times that you shouldn't take care of yourself and not draw. Like yesterday, I I really honestly should not have, have drawn. I should have taken care of myself instead. Um, but that's not what I did. And I think my... my art suffered a bit for it so you know sometimes when you get in that rut you need to just do it anyways but um you know not expect so much out of yourself that you're going to make a masterpiece know that that what you do whether it's drawing or painting or cooking or whatever that it might not be the best experience but that you gave it a go good go, you know. I needed that dark over here to balance this dark over here. And I'm going to need some sort of dark here in the middle. And maybe this one here. What I want to do is... Trying to figure out. It's got to go this way and then this way, huh? There we go. And then this way. And then this way. Something like that. It's similar to this, but it's a little bit different. I don't know. <laughs> don't know.
I'm just playing at this point. You can tell. Oh, that was kind of cool. That made an interesting flowery sort of a shape, didn't it? Huh. I like that. I fill that in with dark. Just playing. Okay, another question since I'm taking some time to play here. My question is how has tangling been expressed in your other artistic endeavors and how has your other art influenced your tangling? That's an interesting question. Um It hasn't really affected my paintings. Um, I think I um, I learn and I understand composition um, in both um, things that I do, whether it's um, paint or even especially my mixed media when I'm doing like glue books and stuff um, if you just kind of just do it and don't think too hard and just do what feels right you start to learn about um, what compositions and where things are placed and how they uh, relate to one another um, and it starts to come more naturally as to where to stick stuff um, I think composition is the hardest thing to um, get a grasp on, but once you do, it kind of um, translates to all of your media. So it doesn't really matter whether you're drawing or painting or gluing or, you know, collaging or uh, fluid art or whatever. Um, you start to get a, an innate knowing of what looks good and what looks off when you are doing composition. Like I start looking at this and I go, okay, I've got a lot of dark here and I got some dark here, but this is a different kind of dark than this. And I need to balance that somehow. Um, So that's kind of what I'm doing here is as I'm balancing my darks and my lights because I think right now it's lopsided. I like all the different interesting things I've done with the with the pattern in here, but I think it's lopsided compositionally. So I think I need more dark here. I can leave those two kind of light, but I think these two need to be a little darker somehow, but I'm not too sure what I want to do yet.
it could be I just want to color that in. Maybe I'll get my bigger pen. Let me try the new brush pen and see how it works. And just color this middle part in. Do I want all of them or every other one? Maybe just start with every other one. it easy to fill in big spots nice and nice and clear that's good and it's thin enough that I can get into those little corners Maybe that's pretty. Okay, I'm happy with that. This needs something. So yeah, I think that's uh, how my tangling and my other art endeavors overlap is mostly in, in the way of composition. Sometimes I'll put patterns in, like into my art journal or whatever, um, in my mixed media, but mo most of the time they don't really overlap. Yeah, I don't. I really want more dark on this page. All of it needs more dark. Just all of it. I want dark, but I don't want quite that fat. I'll go with this one. How's that? That's more balanced. This needs something over here. It's going to get like every third one though.
Not every other one. Every two or three. There we go. Alright, that's better. I like that. Uh, what was this called? I've forgotten already. This was called Hex. Hex something? Hex. Hex windmill? Hex. Hex swirl. I think I definitely need some shading. I can see this where I had that hex right in there. I don't like that. Try that. Does that help? That does help. Um, Try that. Got a little carried away with my pencil, but see what that does. If I don't like it, I can erase it. That's better. It needed something to make them not so flat. This one too. Aha! There we go. That's better. Okay, I think I'm done for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. Starts the next week tomorrow, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So I've got uh, new questions to answer for tomorrow. Uh, I've got new drawings to do. And I will uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Have a great day.